and welcome to the third session of game making. So, tell me, how are you? Is everything on track? Yes, that sounds really good. So, this class will be a continuation of the previous class and in this class, you will be studying how to give the game over condition. Yes, you heard it right. So, are you excited to learn that? Yes, that sounds good. So, first, let's see what are the concepts that you will be studying in this class. So, come, let's explore it now. So, in this interesting session of ping pong AI game, as I had already mentioned, is you will be studying how to give the game over condition to the code. And not only that, from this class, you will be exploring coding concepts like what is go to block, what is say and think comments, what is comparison operators. What a weight block and not only that, you will be studying how to give the repeat loop. Yes, so tell me, as this topic is new to you? Yes, you are familiar with some of these topics already, right? So let's continue and get into the most interesting part of game making. So come, let's... For that, the only thing that you will have to do is to follow my instruction. Now, it's your time. Please do open your craft. Yes, well, have you opened your craft? Good. Then open the game that you have already saved. Have you opened it? So in the last class, we have learned how to make the ball move as well as how to give the interaction between the ball and the paddle. Do you remember that? Well, great. So in this class, we are going to add some more things to the existing code and also we will learn how to give the game over condition to ping pong AI game. So are you ready for that? Great, so let's continue. So, do you remember, in the last class, we had set three lifelines to a game, right? Yes, and each time, once the ball touches the line, the lifeline was getting decreased by one, right? Yes, and we haven't inserted any condition like when it should be ending. Yes, so here, we are going to add when the game should be over, that is, once the lifeline gets zero, we have to make the game over. So we are going to give the card accordingly to that. So are you guys ready? Again, we have to give a conditional statement. And from where are these conditional statements available? It's your time, tell me. Yes, you said it right. They are available inside the control block, right? So click on the control block and choose from there the condition like if then, okay? And now tell me, what is the condition that we should give inside if then? Yes, we have to check whether the lifeline gets equal to zero, right? But do you remember, we have learned about an operator in the previous session, which you used to compare between the values and the variables. What is that? Good, you said it right. It is the operators, right? Yes. So the purpose of the operators is just to compare between the values and the variable, okay? So from the operators, choose equal to 50, okay? And then change that to 0. And what is that which must be equal to 0 to stop this game? Yes, lifeline, right? So I'll be please click on the variable block. And the purpose of the variable block is to add score to your game, right? Yes, so inside the variable block, we have created a variable which is lifeline. So, so drag and drop it to the algorithm part inside that bubble, okay? Yes, so now we have given it like this. So each time, once the ball touches the line, the lifeline will be getting decreased. And once the lifeline gets equal to zero, then what should be happening? Yes, we should stop the game, right? Yes, so go to the control block and choose from there, stop all. Yes. Have you done it? It's your time. Please do it, all of you. Yes. So here, all which is related to setting the lifeline is ready. And the thing that is rest now is to give a game over condition. So are you ready to do the game over condition now? Yes. So now do you know that the total time period of this game will be 3 minutes. Okay. So 3 minutes means how many seconds? Yes, I said it right, 180 seconds, right? So first we are going to give the condition to set the time, okay? So now tell me, if you want to start a program in Adacraft, which is the block that you will go for? Well, you said it right. You have to go to the event block and choose from there when green flag clicked, right? Yes, it's your time. Or if you please go to the event block and choose from there when green flag clicked. Good. See, now 
we have to set the time that is the time remaining must be set to 180 seconds right but is there a variable like time remaining over here no so we have to set it out right yes so if you please go to variables and choose make a variable option time remaining and then give okay so have you set it good so now we have given a variable right time remaining right yes so i have already told you that the total time period which is being available for this game is just 180 seconds right so first we have to set the time remaining to 180 seconds okay so can you see the first option over here yes then drag and drop it to the algorithm part and change it to time remaining and what is the time remaining yes 180 seconds right and each second okay i'll say this again so each second the time goes on decreasing and the counter have to be decreased accordingly right so that means that action have to be repeated until a game is over right so we have to repeat that action again and again for 180 seconds right yes so there is a set of blocks called as repeat block which is used to repeat an action how many times as you want so as i want this action to be repeated 180 seconds i will go to the repeat block which is being available inside the control block and choose from there repeat okay yes and then how many times i want to repeat it out yes 180 seconds so whatever condition whatever condition that you are giving inside this repeat block will be repeated again and again for 180 seconds so now tell me what is the condition that we have to give inside just think and tell me yes the counter had to be changed by one continuously right and then reach to zero right yes so let it wait for one second okay yes so can you see that first block over there Yes, then drag and drop it. This will help you to introduce a time delay of one second. Okay, then drag and drop it inside the repeat loop. Have you done that? Good. So it decreased for one second. Yes, so it wait for one second and then what had to be happened? Yes, I said it right. The time remaining had to be decreased by one, right? Or if you please click on the variable block and choose from there the change block. Okay, yes, and this time have to change the time remaining to minus one right yes so give accordingly have you given that yes so now what we had said we had set the event block to start the code and then we had initialized the time remaining to 180 seconds right yes so this timer goes on decreasing by minus one and once it raises zero what had to be happened yes we have to stop the game right we have only three minutes to play this game so once it reaches 180 seconds we have to stop so for that or if you please click on the control block and choose the option stop all it's your time please do it all of you have you done it now we had set the time remaining to 180 seconds right and once it reaches 180 seconds it has to display a message like the game is being over right yes so you have to know that the game get over right yes so we are going to add a display message to the game okay so for that what we have to do is we will again have to go to the event block right yes so it is the event block that is used as starters to begin a program right yes so go to the event block all of you and choose from there the first option which is when green flag clicked it's your turn please do it all of you yes so have you done that i hope yes okay so now what we have to do is as i had already told we have to set a game over condition and when should be this happening yes always if the time remaining get equal to zero it has to display that message right yes so there is a set of blocks inside the control block which is called as forever if okay that means every time if the specific condition is being met then the blocks inside it will be getting executed okay yes so inside the forever if we are going to set the time remaining to zero okay so let's go to the operators and the purpose of the operators is to compare between these values and the variables right so go to the operators and choose from there equal to 50 option okay and then change that to zero so what should be reaching to zero yes time remaining right so go to variables and choose that option of time remaining then drag and drop it inside 
Have you said it? So forever, if time remaining is equal to zero, what have I told you? Yes, it should display a message like game over, right? And do you know which is the block that we are using to display messages? Yes, there is a set of blocks in purple color which is called as the looks block, okay? And the purpose of this looks block is to add say and think comments, okay? All the thoughts of the sprite is being controlled by this looks block and not only that, even the appearance of the sprite is being controlled by the looks block, okay? So from the looks block, let's use the say comment which is say hello and then change this hello to game over, okay? Yes, so let's do that now. Yes, it's your turn. Please do it, all of you. Drag from the looks block the say command and then drop it inside the forever if condition. Have you done that? Good. So now we have set the condition to display game over in case the time remaining is equal to zero, right? Yes, but not only that. You remember in the earlier case we had set the lifeline also, right? So once the lifeline was getting equal to zero, we were giving a stop all command, right? Yes, do you remember that? So now we are going to give a display message in the game over condition of the setting the lifeline also. So are you guys ready? Yes, so that should be given again as a new set of blocks. So well, it's time to go to the event block, okay? So if you please go to the event block and choose from there when green flag clicked, okay? Have you done it? Good. So now what is that we have to give? So we have to give a condition like this. Once the lifeline is getting equal to zero, it should display a game over message, right? Yes. So, and this action has to be repeated again and again, well? Yes. So go to the control block, all of you, and choose from there, forever block. Because this action will be repeated continuously again and again with zero end, okay? So now it's your time or if you please go to the control block and choose from there the forever loop. Have you done that? Great. So now it's time to add the condition and which is the set of blocks that we used to add the condition? Tell me. Yes, the if then block from the control category, right? So go to the control block and choose from there if then. Right? Have you done it? Yes. And what is that we should add? Yes, we should give like once the lifeline is getting equal to zero, then behave accordingly, right? Yes. So let's go to the operator which is used to compare between the values and the variables and choose from there equal to 50, okay? So here also we have to set the lifeline to zero, right? Yes. So go to variable blocks and choose from there the lifeline variable. Have you done that? Good. So see. Once the lifeline is getting equal to zero, now the ball is in a random position, right? Yes, so we have to align that to a specific position, okay? So go to motion block and use the option go to. Okay, so now we have to align the ball in the center, okay? So for that what we have to do is, we have to give the position like zero, zero in x and y, okay? It's your time, please do it all of you. Yes, go to motion block as it is a motion block that is used to control every movement of the sprite. So go to motion block and choose from there the go to option, okay? Yes, have you done that? Great. And once, if the lifeline get equal to zero, we have to give that comment of game over, right? Yes. So go to looks block and use from there the say, okay? And what we should give here, say game over, right? I said that. Good. So now can we add sound effects to the sprite? So you should produce a loud sound, right? Yes. So let's go to sound effects, okay? So let's go to sound and then let's add sound, okay? So there are four ways to add sound effects to your sprite, right? Yes. So let's go for the first way, which is to choose a sound from the Adagraph library and then let's search for a lost volume, okay? Yes, I got it. So now... Let's go back to the code category. So have you done that? Have you choose a sound loss? Great. Okay. So now let's go to the sound block. It is this sound block that is used to give the stage or the sprite, the volume. Okay. Yes. So here that is play sound loss until done. Okay. Have you chosen it? 
Good, so now we are all set ready with the card. So which means now it's time to play the game, right? Yes, so let's click on the presentation view. Each time when the ball touches the paddle, the score was getting increased. And each time when the ball touches the line, the lifeline was getting decreased, right? And the time remaining was set to 180 seconds. And you see what happens there? Once the lifeline was over, that means once the lifeline was equal to zero, it displayed a game over message and a game was stopped there, right? Yes. Do you want to see that again? Yes. So let's do that again. So just do it with me. See what happens? The score was increasing once the ball was touching the paddle. And once the ball touches the line, the lifeline was being continuously decreased. And you see that? Once the lifeline is getting over, yes, displayed a game over message. So what about you? Have you played it? Good, great. And is it interesting? Right. So well, so now it's time to wind up and this means it's time to recap what are the lessons that we have learned in this class. So in this class, we learned a set of blocks from motion category which is good to block, right? Yes. And this was used to set your sprite to a specific position, right? In exam by coordinates, right? Yes. And then we learned how to add sound effects by using the sound block and we used some of the blocks like play, sound, lows until done, right? Yes. And then we explored another by using wait one second, we added a delay of one second to your game, right? Yes. And then we learned about repeat loop that is used to repeat an action how much times as we require, right? Yes, and also we learned forever if block. The purpose of this block was to repeat that action forever if the specific condition is being met. Okay, and not only that, we learned about operators, and the purpose of the operator was to compare between the values on the variables. And in our game, we want to compare the values of lifeline and also time remaining, right? Yes, so we use the equal to operators from the operator category, right? Yes, and not only that, we explored a purple colored block which is called as the looks block and the purpose of the looks block was to add say and think comments to your sprite. So from the looks block, we used a say comment to indicate our game over. So do you remember all this? Yes, so tell me, was it interesting? Great. So, that's all about the session. Thank you all for your participation. Have a nice day. Bye. Take care.